All right. All right, well, um, I am Rosemary Howell. I am here with uh, the Holter Museum of Art. Uh, we are starting a quarantine and create mini series um, where I am going to interview artists in their studios virtually. And basically what you wanna know, um, you know, how has this changed your studio practice, uh, helped it, hindered it, uh, what are you doing to adapt to the situation and um, how can people support you? Uh, so I'm here with artist Sarah Catapano. Uh, she works at Studio 740. Um, so hello, Sarah. Hello. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind just to uh, introduce yourself and uh, talk just a little bit about your work and uh, Studio 740 and what your practice is like right now. Sure. All right. Uh, Sarah is my name. I've sort of been tooting around the East Coast until I was invited to work out at Studio 740 a year and a half ago. So this is about my second year and I've decided to stay one more year. Beth is generous enough to open that option up to some of us, which is great. So get to hang out in Hel Helena, excuse me, a little bit longer. Um, right now, my practice is sort of in balance. I mean, aside from right now, <laughs> uh, in, before the whole pandemic, my practice was sort of playing around with different biomorphic forms and using emotive ideas to ex use as expression through these, this biomorphism in sort of an abstract way. Um, also trying to balance life and studio practice, having jobs outside of studio mm -hmm. and then finding time to still go into the studio. It's been really interesting since school. So, but yeah, but that, uh, until the pandemic, that was my life. It was going to the studio four days a week and then during the day on the three days that I work outside of the studio. Gotcha, okay. And can, can, you, can you talk a little bit more about uh, the biomorphic art, the realm that you um, work in? Because I know that um, you also have a residency scheduled for biomorphic artists. Can you talk a little bit more about that concept and what that looks like? Yes, yes, so biomorphism is essentially a newish term, uh, sort of taking a referential imagery from nature uh, animals, plants, biology, all sort of biological forms and as, uh, as imagery to put into one thing and sort mm -hmm. of abstracting it and using it as an expressive form. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people using it in different ways. Every, well, that's what's kind of neat about biomorphism. It's not sort of linear. It's just sort of an interpretation of an idea, which is using nature as inspiration mm -hmm. and kind of mixing, matching, micro, macro, forms so lots of people are using it in more like the fleshy sense it can be the abject is kind of biomorphic it's referencing the body but it's not a body it's just like a blob of skin or something or kind of looks like something you might know what it is but you're not really sure mm -hmm. so my work specifically is more plant and oceanic okay. in the sense of biomorphism like using those reference images to uh, influence my work my studio wall is sometimes covered with different images like that. Uh, I actually am really bad about printing out stuff. Um, excuse me, I'm like fumbling all my words. Uh, no, 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 somebody no. in so long. <laughs> um, I like, I, as you can see, I have a lot of plants in my house, so I try and surround myself with life. I grew up at the beach, so always seeing these oceanic forms and plants and different animals in life, trying to use them just to create new things that don't already exist but also as a way to express myself. I find it's easier not to have rules, and that's the beauty in abstraction. There is no rule, and nothing has to look a certain way because you're making it up, which is really good. Uh, yeah. For yeah. me, it's like if there are rules, then I'm so OCD, I would spend a year on one thing because it doesn't look right, it never looks right, you know, for me at least. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and so most, the bulk of your work is, is ceramic and clay, and, but I know that you use other materials too. Can you talk a little bit, a bit about your material process? Right, so 99% uh, of it is going to be ceramic. Uh, I do low firing with underglazes, so kind of just sort of, I don't use a lot of glaze in my work just because mm -hmm. I like the surface of the velvet underglaze series from Amico. So I like to spray it on so it's got that velvety surface, which it holds up to its name. And then if I'm gonna use a different material, a lot of times it's as a support or part of the pedestal. So sometimes I'm using flocking, on the piece to add another layer of texture or I'll use 
some vinyl upholster, like I'll upholster my own little plinths for my pieces to sit on, sort of in reference to the 18 and 1700s curio cabinet displays. Mm, mm, okay. Type of things. I've, I've used like bell jars and different things like that. Uh, currently, I'm mostly focusing on ceramics just because I'm in a new place mentally <laughs> and trying just to hone it. You know, you go off in one direction sometimes and you need to sort of pull it back in and maybe explore a different direction. Mm hmm right now and so, and so during during the the shutdown and and things like that um with studio 740 how is that affecting your studio practice are you still able to get there get in there and work from time to time or how is up uh, beth kavner navigating that situation right so our studio was open until the uh, shelter in place order took effect and mm -hmm the past two weeks before the shelter in place we were still able to go into the studio but it was very much altered to accommodate for the COVID-19 virus. So we had to be wearing gloves most of the time if we were gonna leave our particular space. We had to wipe everything we touched off with sanitizer mm -hmm. and uh, different bleach, bleach type stuff, like through the kitchen, through the bathroom, anything you touched you had to wipe off. So we were trying to keep very on top of spreading it or trying not to infect each other. We weren't allowed to go in if you felt sick at all. It's also allergy season. We live in the mountains, it's kind of tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. But so now that it's uh, a shelter in place order, I haven't been into the studio in about a week other than just popping in to grab things. So we're still, we still have access. We're just not supposed to go there and work for extended mm -hmm. amount of hours as most of us want to do. So right. um, at the moment, Beth is allowing one or two people to be in there at a time. I think governor's law is at most two people, but they need to be really far away from each other. Mm -hmm. So. If anybody wants to go in there, we just sort of need to let her know. And then she'll either say that we are able to come and work in our space, depending on where our space is compared to hers, or come in at a time when she's not in there. Gotcha. So some people work late at night. Noah Rydell works, he's the night owl of the studio. So he goes in there at night when nobody's there and it's fine. He's wiping, he's wiping his face down all the time. And then I guess Chelsea might be going in at like five in the morning. I haven't heard from Yoonji. I think she's holed up at home at the moment, but, um, I sort of planned ahead a little bit and brought some clay home and some materials to be able to work on smaller things in my kitchen. But I haven't, I haven't busted it out in a while since I've been working on these masks. So I don't want to contaminate my space with dust for as long as possible, you know? Yeah, right. So, so, and that's, and that's something that's, uh, you've taken a bit of your creativity from, you know, um, uh, you know, your craft and now you're sewing masks for um, nursing. Yeah. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about that? What what went into that decision making? And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a sewing machine. Took some fibers classes. Now, know how to use a sewing machine, which is, I guess, uh, not everybody does. So I figured I could put my skills to help mm. the community. And I was looking online, and the cotton masks, like they're great. They're better than nothing. But I wanted to do something a little bit better if I could to help nurses or whatever. And I was looking up a way to use HEPA vacuum bags. Mm -hmm and found a pattern that allows them to be really safe and, or I mean, better for being around people who are infected. So it's at least a step towards it being able to be used in a hospital, maybe. So, and I have a friend that's a nurse at the local Helena hospital. So I'm probably gonna donate most of them to Helena. Mm -hmm. If other, other than that, uh, that's people who have donated funds. They're kind of expensive. Each ba um, two bags is like thir 10 or 13 bucks. So, and that makes eight, each bag. Wow. Four. So it's eight bags per, for thirteen dollars, or eight masks for thirteen dollars. So plus time and material, other materials. But I've asked all the people that have donated some money to help me make these masks if they want to send them to their local hospitals, also. So I'm going to be shipping a few out. A couple wow. Of okay. okay. Yeah. And I bought all the ones we were talking about this earlier. Bought all the all the vacuum bag, the HEPA vacuum bags in Helena. Apparently, there were only six. <laughs> and wow. So I got them all. But now they're in mask form, and if you want to see one. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I just ordered a bunch online, and they should be here next week, th later this week or next week. So the idea is sort of like you use the uh, natural edge of the vacuum bag, and then you sort of sew different things. It's got a little pipe cleaner glued in here, so you can shape it around your face, and it turns into like a little duck mask. Wow. Duck okay. Mask. Wow. Okay. And it's got Very two little... Yeah, hopefully they're able to be, I think they're going to be able to be used no matter what. So it's, you know, towards the effort. Otherwise, I'll just be a couch potato. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's something awesome about that, right? You know, um, 
craftspeople, uh, artists, you know, we, we have the skilled labor and, we're, uh, and and now we're able to utilize it, you know, yeah. even though we are at home and kind of help society in that way. So that's a really, that's really Definitely. fantastic. So thank you yeah. for doing that. Depression, depression era times, the, uh, <laughs> the makers get to shine you know that's right that's right <laughs> and that's what we're trying to like you know uh definitely show with this mini series and things like absolutely that. If, if we could transition just for a second i want to uh talk a little bit about the first security artist grant uh that you were just awarded from the holzer so congratulations um and i know that uh your watershed um watershed center for the ceramic arts residency was postponed uh but uh i just um yeah, I want to talk a little bit about you know how how that uh, for security artist grant uh, is going to promote your artist pra art artistic practice and um, you know help you um, help you uh, with your artist practice. So, can you talk a little right. bit about that? Well, uh, before the residency was canceled, uh, it was going to be well. It's okay, so it isn't canceled. It's being postponed till next summer. Okay. Essentially, like most of the artists who were going agreed that 2021 is our summer to shine. So. Watershed and I think a lot of uh, craft schools and even in Sika are being super, you know, understanding with having to cancel everything that they're willing to extend this year's programming to next year, just since it's sort of like a gap year on things happening. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing it next summer. And the idea is biomorphism in general. So we've invited a bunch of different biomorphic artists from around the country to go to Watershed and work together and bounce ideas off each other. And like I said before, we're all using biomorphism in a different way. So some people are using it like the flesh aspect of it, mixing with the biology or nature and such. Some of us are just oceanic, some of us are just plants. So it'll be really fun to get to actually be around these kind of people because all of us sort of spread out and none of us know each other other than through NSICA or through the ceramic network, mm -hmm. not never having worked near each other. So it's really, it, was, it was going to be really exciting to actually get to talk and be around like your club, you know, like yeah. a little group of weirdos, but it's still going to happen. Maybe now more people are going to be able to go because they have a whole year. Oh, you plan ahead, right? Yeah. So yeah. it could work out. Uh, a, a, a couple of the artists have also been invited. I'm putting on a show because, was very uh, inspired by the application for the first security artist grant to also propose a show to Ensika. So 2021, by then, <laughs> <laughs> we're having a show. Um, got some pretty big name biomorphic artists to agree to be in a show at Ensika, which is really exciting. And I think it's gonna help put that genre of art kind of more on the map. You know, sculpture has all of its like tropes and it's different genres and biomorphism is sort of like kind of under the rug still i think mm. and it's just sort of like a different way of thinking and a different way of using what's around you as inspiration that we're hoping to bring a little bit more into the limelight oh very cool very cool mm -hmm. um so just to kind of you know end on a positive note uh how can we um, how can the community, you know, help support you as an artist? How can uh, the community help support Studio 740? You know, uh, what it, um, are there ways that we can do that? Um, I mean, obviously. <laughs> Always. No, uh, do you yes, have any upcoming support. shows? Um, yes. Do you have any upcoming shows? Uh, does Studio 740 have any upcoming events that we could uh, keep a lookout um, for? During the Brave Ash, we're going to be having an open studio tour. So okay. that'll be exciting. Uh, we're proposing a block party for all of Front Street, assuming everything is still happening that weekend. If the Montana Clay Tour holds on and Brave Ash is still happening, we're having our open studio. We're going to be setting up our work, inviting the Gulch Distillery, Bad Bettys, whoever else wants to sort of come down the block to like have a mini block party on that Saturday when there's the uh, farmer's market. So you just have to walk half a block more down Front Street, get come in, check out the studio because it's normally close to the public. Mm -hmm. We'll have a few things for sale if you want to buy something, but most of us are bigger, uh, bigger form sculptors. So we don't have a ton of sellables, but it's also just great to get to sh share with the community. Um, I know myself and Chelsea are making smaller objects since both of us also work in the service industry, which is now not an industry as of all the closing. So we're going to be making some smaller work to help sustain our living situation. If people are interested in buying those also, we still have to pay rent, at home and at the studio. So if anybody feels like donating, that would be cool. No pressure, we'll be fine. But you know, if you feel like supporting a local artist who's hanging out in their house also, we're here. <laughs>
Yeah, fantastic. So do, is there a, a way, um, uh, you, do you sell the, the smaller works that you're talking about right now? Or is that something yeah. we can keep an eye out for? Keep an eye out for it. Uh, with the studio being closed, things aren't being run through as quickly, but I'm hoping by this week or next week, I'll have some finished things ready to be sold to help supplement income. And um, maybe I'll send you a link or something or a heads up and you can let your people know or something. Absolutely, absolutely. Something like that. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> yeah, well, I, that's that's and I don't usually sell things, so it's very strange to me to make <laughs> <laughs> buy my stuff. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Well, no, thank you. Thank you again for uh, meeting with us. And uh, that's what we want to do. We want to continue to uh, make sure that our artists, artist community is supported and heard. Um, uh, that's what the Holter's trying to do with this um, quarantine and create mini series. So um, we will continue on the, on this. Uh, keep your eye out for uh, more videos, more artist uh, studio visits virtually. Um, thank you again, Sarah, so much. Um, thank you, Rosemary. And <laughs>